we get into the issues we discuss for you and the show is brought to you by bank of africa as strong as a group and close as a partner mtn everywhere you go ashasi university educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for africa roberts and sons seeing is believing way lead home is where one starts star assurance that's your solid partner mg auto trading official distributors of mg vehicles in ghana cbg we stand with you Fabri Metal, your partner in steel and Rehoboth Properties. Now, I get to introduce my guest to you, and then we begin our discussion. So, uh, you have followed all the debates about the LGBT or anti-LGBT bill. What exactly is in that bill? Have you read it? The ac academics, the professors who are also against it, you have been abusing and vilifying them. Have you read what they have put in their <laughs> memorandum? It will shock you. I got people confessing this week. They are reading the bill for the first time after they've been asked to read it. <laughs> and some have not read it at all, and they are talking as if they have. When we return, Professor Techua Menu, Professor Emerita, Institute of African Studies, University of Ghana, Legon, former director, Social Development Policy Division, United Nations uh, Economic Commission for Africa, uh, also former director, Institute of African Studies at the University of Ghana, will join us. She's actually on Zoom with us. Roxon Nelson Dafamako, MP, Saudi, member, Constitutional, Legal, and Parliamentary Affairs, Public Accounts, Standing Orders, Committees of Parliament, the man who has been filing uh, rates to the Supreme Court recently, challenging all the things that you, you love to see him challenge. Dr. Pukwe Dusei is a director, Legal, National Communications Authority, that's the NCA. He will also uh, join us. Professor Charles Gottfried Acker, Associate Professor of Economics, Institute of Statistical, Social and Economic Research, ESA, and former Director, Center for Social Policy Studies, University of Ghana. He also joins us. Dr. Charles Rekubrobe, Chief Policy Analyst, Ghana Institute of Public Policy Option, GIPO. Senor Kwasi Hosi, a CEO, Ghana Chamber of Bulk Oil Distributors. Dr. Theo Echampong, economist and political risk analyst, will also join us. We'll be right back. You can't come and impose your culture on us. If you would tell us, say, the reason why you won't give some joy, you won't give honorable this, honorable that, because of, because wouldn't you say, Ghana Constitution? Send me as a member of parliament. The American will flow no piano. You can't hold me responsible anywhere. So if you want to use that, then you cannot be in our country. We will have to demonstrate until the foreign ministry closes down that, ministry, uh, that embassy. You can't come and sit in our country and do what you want. We are not forcing you to say, yeah, dear, yeah, yeah, pay. But you won't mean be share so. But also, what can say? Members of parliament from our, our country cannot visit your country. We will also ensure that nobody from your country can visit our country. That's why I like Nigeria. Nigeria is very, very emphatic about that. You put a sanction, they put similar. We are sending notice to our foreign ministry. Be ready. Anybody, any embassy that thinks they can use this as a way of threatening any of our members of parliament, our foreign ministry will insist that embassy leaves, shutdowns and leaves. I see. Unfortunately, we are introducing into this discourse emotions and sentiments which I think is very much unnecessary. With all the threats that are being poured into the arena. Which threats? Oh, people saying that uh, we'll chase members of parliament with uh, buttons and cut gels if they don't pass this law and so on. I think it's, you out? It's, it's, it's not necessary. Is it the case that, and people, some, somebody was even saying that, oh, we should telecast um, the, the discourse so people get to know who will be voting against what and so on. It means, you see, the people, some of them, they're not even following 
the conduct of business in Parliament. There's never been an occasion when in the consideration of any bill, we've shrouded it in secrecy. Everything is done in the open. And for those of them who are saying that, then we'll know who voted against the bill and so on and so forth. When artists at any stage do we vote on a bill? The only time that we take a major vote on the bill is when we pass it through what is called the second reading. It is there that the principles of the bill are elucidated on by the sponsors of the bill. We have to um, have a proper, and that's actually what one issue that I have mm. with those who, who um, um, support gay rights. They think that it's not progressive for you to advocate against gay rights. Mm. I do not understand. I can't come to terms with that. The fact that you find it appropriate to advocate for the rights of gays and lesbians, that's not mean that I should also not have the right to advocate against that, that practice. Mm. And indeed, one of my early engagements with some high commissioners here, I made a point to them, high commissioner ambassador, that, well, I should feel free to, our nation should also feel free to advocate against the practice of lesbians and gays. Right, so you had uh, Muntaka Mubarak, the MP for Aswasi and the Minority Chief Whip. And then you had the Majority uh, Leader, Oseche Mensa Bunsu. Uh, the path that he wants the bill to take now, does it suggest to you that this bill may not go as initially thought? The sponsors, have they been rushing to crash land? on Article 108. And you also had the Attorney General, Godfred Yebwa Dame, and that was uh, long ago he spoke on this issue. So, uh, thank you very much, Prof, for making the time to join us on Zoom. Thank you very much, uh, Samson. Good morning. And... Um, Yes, good morning. So Great. I'm pleased that I'm on your show. Great today. to have you. Great to have you. And uh, Roxanne says uh, good morning to you also. <laughs> right. Good morning. Right. Um, so, Roxanne, uh, I'd like to ask this one small question. Yes. There are people who have been asking, and I want us to focus on what's in the bill yes. and what's in the memorandum that's been submitted. And I find, for example, that in my life as a lawyer, a little over 10 years, I haven't read a memorandum to a bill that is more than the bill itself. You have about 31 pages of work, and out of that, you have a 17 plus dedicated only to uh, the introduction, the memorandum. That tells you that that's a difficult bill to work with, right? Um, People are asking the question, is this the most important thing that you should be focusing on? And guess what? The weekend, and thanks to Evan Spencer for that, you know, masterful moderation uh, last week. I went to Amfuega, Wademahe. And when I was going, I went through Sogakope, through to Ho, and the road was good. Now, returning, they I had did, to use... They did Jolo. Right. Jolo Peter. That's right. That's right. Fume. Good. Yes. yes. So you enjoy the mountainous and the snaky mountain area thing. Very interesting. But on my return, I used the Peki Road. I have been told my about it. Thing. Right. So I saw you on the way. <laughs> you were all over the place. <laughs> and I saw how bad, for example, the road is. Yes. And nobody's attending to it. The way it was. Very, very terrible. Yes, uh, you can drive for 40 minutes yes. and you are on rough road your tires, everything might be in trouble. Actually, I saw one bus that had, you know, lost its way. Yes, okay, you saw it yourself too. Why this attention, rather than the bread and butter issues okay. that concern your constituents? Okay, thank you very much. Um, I know you have been monitoring me, and, and I know you know that my, my cries regarding the the state of affairs on the Eastern Corridor Road has been arguably the topmost of all my work in Parliament. And uh, no month passes without me asking questions directly at the road minister to what steps 
it was taken to mm. get the contractor to return to site to, to deal with the road. And so after about four years of persistent cries, um, the contract had, had been stopped. And so what they did was they abrogated it and repackaged the whole project and gave it to a new contractor, First Sky. And so First Sky is handling the section between Askuma to Have, which is 45 kilometers. But what government has done is that the, from Woje to Have, which is about six kilometers, um, Cocoa Bot came in because there's a lot of cocoa farmers uh, or cocoa production activity in that um, area. So Cocoa Bot has come in to take up that cost. So government has awarded the 39.3 kilometers to First Sky, and they're actually on site. Now, the section you complain of had a twin section between Ajokwe and, and Kweve, but First Sky, since returning to site or returning to continue with the project, has reshaped that, so it's more trouble now. Now, I'm informed by the engineer that from about next week, they will handle, they will grade the, the Kweve to Waje section. So that's where uh, uh, things are very terrible as we speak. What they have also done is that there used to be lots of portals on the bitumen section between Pekia Jokwe to Askuma. They've sealed that. I used to use normal concrete to do it. In the Francadria area. The Francadria area. A lot of, it doesn't lot of fall, potholes. Yeah, it doesn't fall within my constituency. Mm. It falls within a soldier man. Yes, I'm, but the question, but, but the question is, mm. but the question is this. Why for many, many years we haven't as a as a country taken that section seriously? So that we jump as soon as we cross the bridge, you enter that patch. And that patch stretches for about 24 kilometers to Askuma. It's not been done since I was a kid. Mm. So if you heard the question, yes, I heard the question. So I want you address yes. the specific matter yes. of the rule yes. and its nature. Yes, but I'm saying. But why? This no, but I'm saying takes that, preeminence. Yes, but, over but, but that. I'm answering you. Mm. So, as an elected representative of the people, I can only focus on asking or demanding from government to come back and do the road. One, they've been able to return to the eastern corridor. The other portion, which is the Francadria section, my brother Okujeto, I mean that section falls between Okujeto's constituency and Esu Jamai. They are always filing questions. In fact, when you get to Eskuma... They are always filing questions. Yes, on, on that section. Mm. In fact, when you get to Eskuma, where the police barrier, that, that, that nodal point... They, they should they, get the church in these constituencies. Yes. They should get the mosques yes. in these constituencies. Yes. I mean, they should get the religious. Yes. They should get the traditional leaders yes. to mount the sort of pressure they are beginning to mount now yes and do, tell they and do tell so. the politicians they do so. they do and so. tell Sam. the politicians what they are saying Sam. now Sam. that if you don't fix this rules permanently yes. we'll, we'll vote, vote against you. i agree with you i agree with you and some the the issue of the road is as as important as it is is only one of the most important is facing us as mm. a people it cannot be the only important thing the joblessness so, exactly poverty exactly so we focus on all that. But in addition to all this, is the canker, is the threat of the spread of this canker amongst our people. Sam, we cannot, nobody can stop over speeding. People will always over speed. But there's a need to check over speeding. So this bill mm. is our speed ramp to over speeding. This bill is our vaccine and our face marks to the spread of gayism in this country. Really? Yes. <coughs> okay. Uh, as I understand, Dr. Pukwe Duse is also joining us, and um, Professor Charles Gottfried Aka also joins us on Zoom. Now, uh, Prof. Uh, Techua Menu, I'd like to take your preliminary commentary on the place of importance of this project in a poor country like ours, where people say, uh, corruption is eating us up. Those who give us aid, they tell us all the time that every year we can't account for three billion. Uh, that school that ought to have been built was not built because the money has gone into one individual's pocket and that person is not in jail. Um, we had uh, close to 
12,000 girls who are supposed to be going to school, teenagers between not even under age. I mean, they are less than 16 or up to 16. And it is a crime that these people should uh, be impregnated. That's uh, yet they've been, they've been uh, impregnated. And the people who impregnated them, we are not told about they facing any actions. You point to this in your, in your memorandum. Yes. Thank you very much, Samson. And good morning again. Um, you were asking me the, yeah, to assess the, the relative importance. That's right. And for us, for us as um, opponents of the bill, we believe that um, our advocacy is important because it safeguards and strengthens our democracy. In our memo, and I'm glad that you also pointed out that what people need to do is to read the bill and read the memos that are um, opposing what is in the bill. So we have set out our arguments quite well in the bill. We have raised the, the Article 108 um, unconstitutionality ground. And then we go into the bill itself and its provisions. And as you, uh, I couldn't agree with you more what you said, the fact that more, more than half of the bill uh, is spent on the memorandum. And then when you go through the bill, um, we are told that whilst in most bills, the interpretation clause is at the end in this bill, because it, it, it is considered necessary to put the interpretation clause at the beginning, and then you go into the actual clauses. So when you go into the actual clauses, you find that most of those clauses are repetitions of what is already in our Criminal Offenses Act, with the exception that in some cases, what are misdemeanors in our Criminal Offenses Act suddenly become second degree felonies and the punishments are doubled, which is, which is already discriminatory, because if these identities that are being criminalized, if you happen to have one of them and you commit an offense, you, you can get double the, the penalty that, um, quote unquote, so-called ordinary citizens get. And then beyond the, the repetition and redundancy of many of the clauses, there is also the unconstitutionality, just the sheer unconstitutionality yeah. of many of the other provisions that are in there. So, so these are the grounds on which um, we oppose the bill. And in our own memo, we also, even the, the statistics that we cite, um, Samson, are, are more dire than what you have referred to about the spate of teenage pregnancy, abuse, um, sexual violence, so many types of violence that um, we would expect our honorable members to concern themselves with. So some of us were very much in favor of uh, private members being able to bring bills, but we had hoped that they would bring bills that were in the public interest and according to the Constitution. So we're really disappointed. And in this, we see the hand of the World Congress of Families. And indeed, at least one of the sponsors of the bill has admitted as much on CTFM about the role of this World Congress of Families, which suddenly now becomes the promoter of local cultures under which this bill is to be brought. Something I don't know if I have time to go into the, for me, the four main things that this bill um, on the grounds on which this bill is founded. Do I? Please proceed. Yes. So there, there are four main grounds on which the, pro, uh, the proponents of the bill uh, proceed. One, the first is on the uh, ground of culture, that LGBTQ activity and related activities are not consistent with Ghanaian traditional and cultural values. The second ground is that it offends and threatens the sanctity of marriage. The third is that um, it is necessary to place restrictions on the basic rights of um, LGBT persons because rights are not absolute. And then the fourth is a public health concern. 
Now, if we go into these grounds that have been proposed, we find that indeed, um, chapter five of our constitution, which guarantees fundamental human rights, grants in Article 26 1 that every person is entitled to enjoy, practice, profess, maintain, and promote any culture, language, tradition, or religion subject to the provisions of this constitution. Article 26 2 says, all customary practices which dehumanize or are injurious to the physical and mental well-being of a person are prohibited. Further, in the directive principles of state policy, um, we talk, uh, there are the cultural objectives of what the state should be. And we know that um, the constitution is an aspirational document and that the directive principles are not justiciable. So under, under Ghana's constitution, culture is not used to determine whether rights are allowable. Rather, culture is assessed on the basis of whether it infringes rights guaranteed by the constitution. So the chapter five, which guarantees basic rights, makes no provision for the restrictions of rights on the basis of traditional Ghanaian customs, beliefs, and values. Okay. The second point I had made was about the sanctity of marriage. So when we look at Ghanaian law, LGBTQ persons are excluded from the institution of marriage. In an earlier program that I was on this week, I tried to make the distinction between sex and marriage. That sex is a private, intimate affair marriage is a public institution the state has a legitimate interest in regulating marriage in setting out the conditions under which marriage can come con, con, uh, can occur so when it comes to um sex the state's interest is whether is in whether the person the two people having sex have capacity have given consent and also that it is private that it does not offend public decency. Those are the three grounds. Mm. So for instance, adultery may be, it's against most people's public morality, but it is not a crime. It is not, the state does not deal with it. So if you like, the, the, the state deals with crime, the church deals with sin. And this week, so many people, including lamentably, the uh, president of the Catholic Bishops Conference, they've been waving at us a decision of the European Court of Human Rights. It's a 2010 decision, by the way. That decision is not about the rights of people to be gay. It's about marriage. It concerned an application by two Austrian men to the European Court of Human Rights to be married. And what the court said was that it was left to the individual states to regulate marriage. So this is being bandied around, allegedly to support the fact that uh, EU Court of Human Rights does not uh, say that gay rights are not human rights. Please read anybody who cares. You can go to the uh, EU Court of Human Rights site. You can go to the BBC site. It's a 2010 decision. And as recently as July this year, the European Court of Human Rights was faulting Russia for not allowing any provision in its law for um, consenting gay people to be married. So it just reinforces the point that I made, that the state has a legitimate interest in determining how, who it will allow to marry and under what conditions. It does not get into the question of sex. So, so that is the issue around. So, it is, it is actually bizarre that uh, people who are not even allowed to be married under our laws are precisely the people who are supposed to be posing a threat to marriage and family life. And one of the things that's in the bill, which is really strange, is that they provide very little evidential grounds for anything that they say, nothing. There is really no research, except of course, the, what the, the, the false uses that they make of the research of the Ghana AIDS Commission and, of course, of the findings 
of the of the um, CDD Afrobarometer survey. So the third ground that I stated was that no grounds are absolute. Of course, we know that um, rights can can be limited, but the state, the the constitution sets out the grounds under which rights can be limited. And it is also important, Samson, to state in this discussion that under Article 33.5 of the Constitution, it says that the rights, duties, declarations, and guarantees relating to the fundamental human rights and freedoms specifically mentioned in this chapter <laughs> shall not be regarded as, regarded as excluding others not specifically mentioned, which are considered to be inherent in a democracy and intended to secure the freedom and dignity of man. In other words, the Constitution allowed that we are a growing state and that uh, needs may change and new rights could be formed. Imagine so in 1992, when, when it was being formulated, it did not pretend that it knew everything, but allowed for this dynamism. So much of the, of the, of the comparison that is made about the restriction of rights goes to the Vigilantism Act and the uh, Cyber Security Act. And it is important to distinguish that in both of these, we're talking about national security. We're talking about harms. So, and, and it is clear, we know the violence that characterized the 2016 and 2020 general elections. So nobody disputes the necessity for criminalizing vigilantism. So, um, or the Cyber Security Act, the on the grounds of, of cyber of um, national security. But the anti-gay bill provides no such public interest grounds for restricting rights to privacy, to free expression, to personal autonomy, non-discrimination, association, etc. It's interesting, you at the beginning you have the attorney general talking about advocate against. Advocate against does not mean legislate and criminalize. Okay, now the last thing about the, the public health concern. And again, so 18.1% of men who have sex with men were found to be HIV positive, which means that the almost 82% of HIV persons were heterosexuals. So it actually does not support anything on this public health thing. So all the things about how much money we spend, etc. I think that you have cataloged the litany of waste in our system. So to, to really focus on some people on these grounds are spurious, mm. extremely spurious. And mm. that is why we said that really there was nothing that already some of the provisions, and I could go on and tell you those clauses, clauses 7, 8, mm. 9, 10, 19, 20, are already provided right. by the Criminal Offenses I, Act. Right. But in most cases, we find that because this bill is so punitive, it goes ahead mm. and doubles the punishment. And then we have clauses 12, 14, 15, and 16, which are patently unconstitutional. I'll so return, those, I return yes. for further elucidation on those uh, specific provisions of the Act. But let me uh, bring in uh, Dr. Pukwe Duse. Now, Dr. Pukwe Duse, do you think that uh, this project um, is, is something that we shouldn't be looking at at this time. The Constitution Review Commission, 2010, 2011, 2012, when they did their work, they said that the commission finds that during its consultations, the overwhelming number of submissions received on the subject, that is uh, homosexuality, was in favor of the non-recognition of the right to sexual orientation for homosexuals. Then they came to say that the commission finds that in any case, it will be neither necessary nor advisable for the Constitution Review Commission to attempt to deal with this complicated issue at this time. It is very probable that a proposal to give some recognition to same-sex relationships in Ghana at this stage will be condemned by a large section of the population in the country, mainly on religious and cultural grounds. 
On the other hand, a suggestion to introduce a provision in the Constitution expressly excluding same-sex marriages in Ghana would be clearly seen by many people in the country and outside of it as a reactionary move not worthy of prog a progressive state. Now, this is the conclusion. The, uh, apart from this, they also said, the more advisable approach would seem to be to leave the matter for settlement by the Supreme Court in due course. If and when there is enough interest in the matter and there is a sufficiently strong feeling about the issue, those who wish to promote the idea will be able to seek an opinion from the Supreme Court and the court will be able soberly, soberly and in its own time to consider the submissions put before it and issue the interpretation of the Constitution in the light of the strength of the arguments advanced. In doing so, the court may also seek to take account of the prevailing conditions and views in the country at the time. Why do you think we are here today? Uh, doc, doc, please unmute your mic. Uh, good morning to uh, my colleagues and uh, good morning to Ghanaians. <laughs> um, after perusing the, the bill, and also following the discussions um, from those who are in support and those who are against. I can make some few uh, quick comments um, that could be very firm in, in, in actually articulating the, my position. The first is that when you said the Constitutional Review Commission said we should not recognize uh, the rise of gayism and, and homosexualism, um, Actually, that is different from what is prevailing at this point, in which people are now going to legislate certain morals and values into our private lives. That's number one. The second aspect also is that we should not lose sight of the fact that uh, the group with Abutuampa uh, and Professor Techua Mendu and the rest, who are advocating against the bill, I in no way saying that they are supporters of lesbianism and gayism. That is one thing Ghanaians must understand. It doesn't mean that they will go and tell their kids that they should convert from heterosexual relationships into gayism and, and, and um, lesbianism. No. They are rather saying that the route you are taking is a wrong route. The third point is that if you look at the tenor of the bill, you don't need anyone to tell you that it won't meet a constitutional test going forward. And I will elaborate briefly on this, that when you get a law in which um, adverbs and, and other descriptive words are used to qualify nouns and, and, and verbs, right? It tells you there's something wrong. So the use of the word proper in, in the name of the law, if it becomes law, I, I'm not sure. In itself, to tell you that there's something wrong. What is proper in this world? When libertarians of, of Stuart Mills and other scholars have over the years established that going into people's private affairs in that nature is not the right thing to do insofar as that doesn't impinge on the public um, values of, of the citizenry, you don't go into that private sphere. I am firmly convinced that we can't say that homosexualism and, and um, its related activities is a human right. I wouldn't accept that. However, I will also not accept a situation in which you can also say that I'm legislating to actually antagonize, not just antagonize, in fact, infringe the rights of certain individuals who have certain orientations. That way, uh, it will be unconstitutional, and, and it will be so overbroad to the extent that 
you are now telling us that these are the proper values of, of our humanity. That way you are, you are mistaken. And I think that is where the problem is uh, in respect of the bill. So in sum, what I'm saying is this, that we should not misconstrue those who are against the current bill as persons who are into lesbianism and gayism. Secondly, we should not think that when we are against the practice of lesbianism, it means that we are infringing on individual rights. That is not the issue. But what infringes on the right of those persons is that you are now saying that they cannot decide to live their private lives if it doesn't come into the public sphere in any way. If someone speaks um, by being, I would say, liberal in saying that we can't more treat these persons, then that person is also committing a crime. That is way out of order. And, and, and in that way, I think that the law, even if it's passed in its current state, will not be able to suffice um, and, and satisfy the, the threshold of constitutionalism when it goes to the Supreme Court of Ghana. So let's actually be um, moderate in terms of how we castigate each other uh, for taking certain and trained positions. There's nothing proper in this kind of um, uh, discourse to say that proper sexuality and, and human values, no, it is not. And as you have followed our cultural um, disposition over the years, you realize that um, things have changed. You have read cases in which in the past, it was only females who were banished in the Provo land and, and which were retarded in the Kosia Koko and the rest, those kind of cases. And the courts could do nothing. As if uh, those who were uh, actually committing um, or impregnating young adolescent children uh, or, or uh, women are only the females themselves. No, but it was being done by the men, but it was only the uh, females who were being punished. So over a period of time, we have transitioned from such strict ways of interpreting cultural values into a more liberal forms of it so that it can be consistent with democratic uh, values that we have decided to uh, absorb. Mm. So we should be careful in thinking that we can legislate into other people's private lives. That way, they are human beings, and you are taking away certain things that they want to keep private uh, into the public sphere. And that right. is wrong in terms of what the law is, is seeking to do. Thank you. And uh, Professor Charles Godfrey Aka, um, I want you to commence by commenting on something I feel is important that Dr. Duse has spoken about. You would realize that, and look, let's call a spade what it is. Anybody who has attempted to even look at the bill the letter, the context of it, the content, and to suggest anything to be done with it is either tagged gay or paid by the gay community. Do you think this is helpful for this uh, discussion? Um, Fuam Wani was on uh, Metro TV the last time, and he was insisting that uh, Akutuampa and the rest are wrong because they can't point to any portion of the constitution where this kind of conduct has been legislated in the constitution to be a right. So he was insisting that until they point out to him in the constitution where you can find this to be a right, they should shut up. So I made a very harmless, you know, um, intervention and pointed to Article 33.5, which says that the rights in our constitution are not exhaustive, but there are other rights which are inherent in the democracy and intended to secure the dignity of human beings. And those rights are also rights, even though they are not in our constitution. In fact, I have gone to court to prosecute a case where I, I stayed on a right, which is, you can't find in our constitution, and it was upheld. If you remember Ropa, Ghanaians living abroad, having the right to vote in Ghana, uh, in wherever they are, and being registered there. Outrightly, I was condemned, and people began to begin to you know, raise issues. And some say, what, where do you belong? What is this? Is this the way to have this discussion? Thank you very much, uh, Samson, and uh, good morning to 
my co-panelists and the uh, Tuganians. Uh, so I will start uh, by saying that the issue is a vexed issue, and that's not something to, to joke with at all. Uh, if you have followed the discussion, and let us also acknowledge that Ghana is not the first country to be discussing this. So for anybody to suggest that such an issue is not important because it's not road, um, or to suggest that um, we are now looking at people's private things, it's very unfair. In 1960s, the criminal code itself was looking at private issues. Sodomy is supposed to be private. But why did the criminal code, as far back as 1960, decided that it's criminal? In the US, until recently, in Switzerland, just until two years ago, in Europe, they have all had these laws passed to protect society. Because it's not just private. People's private actions and choices have implications on the larger community. It has collateral impact on society, on socialization, even on the way we raise children, on the public culture and public morality. So unless we are saying that, well, US, Switzerland, Britain, they just became civilized, they just became wiser. And for all these years that they have existed, for hundreds of years of democracy, they were foolish to impose laws. Even up to today, they have laws that criminalize polygamy. Is polygamy not a private issue? If, why would they allow people to just marry how many wives they want to have? It's against their culture. Nobody can go to the US or to the UK and decide that they, they, they should throw away their, their laws against polygamy. So this is the matter that we must look at. Now, this is the first time in my research that I've seen an issue like this. No, I want you to take the CDD uh, as a very serious organization. The Afrobarometer survey that they have been conducting, they ask people to have their say. This is not about government, it's not about the church, it's not about uh, Muslims. Ghanaians, nationally representative sample of Ghanaians are asked, have your say about all things that affect you in Ghana, about corruption here and there. Then they began to ask issues about tolerance. Tolerance. And they asked Ghanaians, how willing are you able to tolerate people from different ethnic backgrounds, people from different religion, people from who are immigrants, people who have HIV AIDS. And close to 96% of Ghanaians said, we will tolerate them. I'll have, I'm likely to work with them. I don't care having them as tenants. I don't care having them as co-tenants. I don't care having them as work colleagues. When it came to the issue of LGBTQ, 93% of the Ghanaians across religion, over 90% of Muslims, about 90% of uh, uh, Christians, about 86% of people who don't have any religion, including atheists, they said we do not accept that. It's against our public morale, it's against our culture, it's a deviant behavior. This is a vexed issue. So even before we came to discuss it as a bill, you already told us that in 2010, the Constitutional Review Commission, they received almost 98% of the public submissions were on this matter that they don't like it. These are Ghanaians speaking. This is not the church, this is not Muslim. Mm. These are Ghanaians. Some of these people are atheists. They have no religion. It cuts across, when you look at the educational career, uh, 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 demographic, even those that have second tertiary education, including myself and people like Pastor Ticho Menu, Dr. Edupoku, 86% of people with tertiary education, educated people, liberal people, those you call progressive, they said they do not tolerate homosexuality. It's mm -hmm. not just about uneducated. Those who live, both men and women, both urban and rural. Now, they came back to ask the issue about you willing to work with them or to live with them. They said, we don't want to have them as a neighbor. We don't want to have them as work colleagues. They asked another question that was very interesting. They asked them that, will you report any person, whether it's your daughter, your sister, your brother, your relative, your close friend, your coworker, or other people, if you find them committing uh, homosexuality, will you report them to the police? And 86% of them said, if I find my daughter engaging in sodom in homosexuality, I will report her to the police, which then means that this matter goes beyond some people who are just promoting hate. These are people that find this unacceptable to the extent that even their own daughter or their own son 
or their own father or their own relative, or their own church member, they are willing to have the law enforcement agencies to deal with them. Mm. So then that makes the matter quite serious. Do you, so find, acts, do you find that the question about promoting hate may have a basis from the bill that, for example, the bill equates bestiality to, you know, LGBT activity. That's, that's wrong, isn't it? And bestiality is already prohibited no. by our law. It, it's not wrong. You see, the issue is the bill is seen LGBTQ as a lifestyle choice. All the arguments they were trying to make was that it was a condition they are born gays and therefore they need a right to be protected given the same rights that are given to heterosexuals. Mm. The bill is in, from all the evidence, from all the scientific research, it is not established that people are born gay or homosexuals. It's a choice. Therefore, somebody can decide to sleep with a dog and it's happening somewhere in, in the Western countries. Somebody can decide to marry three wives. Somebody can decide to be a pedophile the same way somebody can decide to be a homosexual. So uh, it's again, something... ag again, that that suggestion about <laughs> being pedof uh, pedophile, which you you seem to find being elevated in the discussion, is that also not an erroneous way to project hate against LGBTQ people? Because is LGBT being pedophilia? No, something no. And I don't think it's fair to use the word promoting hate. I, 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 I take exception to that. It's a question. I, I just now have read the bill. It's, it's a question. <laughs> yeah, well, so, yes. Mm. Yeah, it's a question I disagree with. Right. Okay, the, the bill is not promoting hate. Uh, in America, until last two weeks in, in, uh, in, in South Switzerland, many countries, they have searched bills. Okay, they have searched laws. The criminal code of 1960 was not promoting hate against sodomites. It was just saying that this is unacceptable. It's a little bit. See, let me let me read uh, uh, the sociologists because I think some of us are anthropologists and sociologists. Uh, just now, just, just a second, just a second, because you you repeat sodomy. In our law, sodomy is differentiated in two ways. When you commit it without the consent of the other person, you are getting into a felony. And the, the sanction is hefty because the person doesn't agree. But when you engage in it with somebody who consents, it's a misdemeanor. So Professor Techua Menu and his team and her team have mentioned to you that why the inequality in the punishment, even if what you are doing will pass master. Well, so I'm just an academic, so this, this is a question to ask to the proponents of the bill. But I've already argued somewhere else that it's a draft bill. Okay, we need to understand the spirit and the letter of the bill. And of course, the bill is not to muscle parliament to pass it by all means in its current state. Almost every bill that in my life I observed, as in a very few exceptional cases, that the bill will just go without any alterations or any discussion. So the Constitutional and our Affairs uh, Legal Committee are going to make input. It will come to the public, the floor. They have already received over 140 public memoranda, some from legal minds, from people, intellectuals. I have sent in a memorandum. So they are, all of these are going to reflect in some alterations, revisions, if we think the punishment is too severe, they do not agree. Mm. But some of the voices I'm hearing is that people are saying that this is the bill itself is totally ill-conceived, is unnecessary, and is promoting hate, and is, as Professor Dr. Adu said, Puk is talking about, is intruding into people's privacy. And what I'm saying is that if you do that, then there will be no role for government. The role of government is to provide public goods. All right. One of the public goods is security. Mm. One of them is public morality to make sure democracy, actually democracy, it's to make sure that we have ethics, we have values, we have cultural uprightness. Otherwise, there's no need for us to have standard board, mm -hmm. food and drug board, police and institutions. So that when people are doing their private activities, it must be legitimate 
and you must not offend public safety, public health, mm. public morality. Okay. So if uh, your private activity, mm. like Galam say, is going to impose to be injurious to the common good of society, even though it is private, I think the state has right and duty to impose restrictions and to regulate that. Great. I think that is where we need to see it. Great. And, and, but, but can, and, I correct, and, can I correct and, and, something that was a minute because it must not be allowed to go. Okay. When they said that 18 percent of the HIV AIDS cases of men who have sex with men have HIV AIDS, it does not lead to saying that 82 percent are heterosexuals. Is wrong. On the average, you know that it's taken average among the heterosexuals. Among heterosexuals, is less than 10 percent. I think the national average itself is low, is around 2 3 percent. Mm. But among homosexuals, it's 18 percent. That's what we are saying. It is the most riskier group all over the world. In the US now, it's about 70% of men who sleep with men have HIV-AIDS. Okay. I'm saying, I'm saying, do I get a right of rebuttal? Yes, you will. You will at the right time. Just hold on for me. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, the, the, there was this bit you mentioned about the CDD uh, report. I just needed a little uh, uh, clarity on it before you proceed. And the issue about the PDO files, um, it, it has to be stated, shouldn't it, that um, so far in this country we have arrested people who are pedophiles and we have not come to a conclusion that those who do that are homosexuals. In fact, heterosexuals are the ones who have been doing it. Now, the CDD survey, the same survey found that... Um, that there is a high tolerance for wife beating among Ghanaians. High tolerance for wife beating among Ghanaians. Would you say that, therefore, going by the logic of your argument, that Ghana should have a legislation decriminalizing domestic violence? No, uh, Samson, I think that would be an overstretching. I didn't actually find it. Uh, in the survey report, it's there. There's a tolerance uh, right beating. Of course, you know if you have to interpret every research in its context. It depends on how the question was posed. Uh, so, for example, mm -hmm. people are married, and then they are being molested or suffering domestic violence. Uh, what is the option? The option is for them to divorce. If our cultural values and uh, and religious values and norms already frowns against uh, divorce. Then people say tolerate. To tolerate means that they approve. It means that it's where I will tolerate, I will endure, or they will find other ways of managing the situation. That is not equal to people who say that they did not actually say we reject the, the we reject LGBTQ lifestyle in this mm. country. Mm. It's a total different argument. Right. So, okay, that's that's what but if I should conclude, mm. because you quoted the Constitutional Review Commission, one of the things very profound findings of the Constitutional Review Commission. Which and I have to tell you that I'm, I was really disappointed with the recommendation of the Constitutional Review Commission because to me, I think they did an injustice to us as a Ghanaians. And that's why we are here discussing this matter. Mm. I was expecting them to give a bold direction to government and to the president to already have, and, and the president already would have initiated this bill from the Attorney General's office so that you don't have to wait for what this, uh, the majority uh, leader is now saying that uh, it should not come from private members because when they set up a concern review commission to, to, to test the sensitivity and the, you know, get memorandum and people's views about how the constitution should be amended and should be reviewed. And then you have about 98% of public memos saying that we want you to do something to criminalize, to stop the influx of LGBTQ activities in the country. Then they left the matter and said, well, we think that if we criminalize it, uh, it will be seen by many people in this country and many people outside the country as uh, being reactionary and as being uh, not progressive. Uh, what, what does it mean to be progressive? That progressive means that you must be liberal and allow anything, <laughs> anything to go. Mm. What do they mean by it will be uh, frowned upon by many Ghanaians? That is inconsistent with the Afrobarometer survey. 93% of Ghanaians will actually be happy to have seen a loss coming from the attorney general's office to stop this activity it is only going to be opposed by foreigners and that's their foreign culture because they have now come to an enlightened age 
they have now come to the age where they think they are wiser than God who created us, and they think that they are more intellectual, and they are now come to the point of reasoning, and therefore they are throwing away their own culture. Now, but when the Constitutional Review Commission was now making their final recommendation, let me read what is, they now said. They now said that Ghana's human rights are situated in the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. The charter provides in the preamble that human rights must take into consideration the virtues of their Africans' historical tradition and the values of African civilization. The charter further says that the individual who seeks his or her human rights to be protected has the responsibility to protect the social and the cultural values of the society. The individual shall also have the duty to preserve and strengthen positive African values in his relations with the other members of the society. In the spirit of tolerance, dialogue, and consultation, and in general, to contribute to the promotion of the moral well-being of society. On that basis, the Constitutional Review Commission was of the view that homosexuality could arguably be an example of a situation where the desire of an individual to have sex with a person of the same sex should not be recognized as long as that practice fails to sit with the social cultural values of the society in which the individual finds himself. That's a key profound finding. Mm. And on that basis, I was surprised that the commission was not bold enough to recommend to the attorney general and to the government that this is the aspirations of Ghanaians. And this particular homosexuality does not sit with our African Ghanaian cultural values as Ghanaians and as Africans. Okay, this thank is you. What we talk about. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Duse had a response to that to explain to you that as far as the commission was concerned, yes, as far as the commission was concerned, the best way was this approach rather than what you are seeking that they should put in the constitution to, as it were, proscribe uh, the, the conduct, so to speak. Um, yes, uh, Prof, can I have you quickly and then we'll have uh, Roxanne uh, begin with a portion where I'll let you also come in with where you intended to go originally. So what's your reaction to... Yeah, uh, well, thank yeah. you very much. I'm very surprised at what Professor Aka is saying about Switzerland. On 26th, September 2021, 64% of Swiss citizens voted in a referendum to legalize same-sex marriage. I have seen his memo where he tries to um, establish some correlation between economic development and tolerance for same-sex relationships, and I find it spurious. In fact, as academics, when we argue, when we debate, we debate according in a logical fashion supported by facts. We do not allow our emotions to override us. I just sent a message to Professor Piaggio that it, to ask him, who was the chairman of the Constitution, Constitutional Review Commission, 89% of all submissions to the CRC was on the issue of homosexuality, that's incredible. Mm. In any case, the, the, the government, let me, let me finish, let me finish. The CRC, let me, let me finish. Let me, let me finish. Uh, sorry, let sorry, me sorry, finish. sorry, we sorry. Have uh, we have a host. Okay. Yes. So the CRC report was read in its entirety by the government, issued a white paper. In any case, none of the recommendations were even implemented. And in the what you read, you were talking about tolerance. In the mm -hmm. African Charter on Human People's Rights, they also talk about individual rights. Individual rights. And the African Court of Justice has voided a number of provisions in national laws precisely on those grounds. So I, 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 I really think that um, we should not substitute our private emotions mm. or our religious views in making legislation. All right. And let me go specifically to the 18.1%. I also read the report, and I know that the two highest groups that had HIV prevalence was men having sex with men and commercial sex workers. And it was because of multiple partners. So it was not just about their orientation. Okay. And what you mm. what is proposed in the bill will make the situation worse because it will drive people underground as has been shown in various places. Mm. So let's, we can, we can take any statistic, right. even the mm. CDD report, the Afro-Barometer report. At the end of it, the thing was not to legislate the intolerance 
of the 93% of people, but to protect the 7%. So this legislation will actually embolden. That is why yesterday we had an NDC communicator saying, stone and kill gays and lesbians in your communities. This from a party. If you go on the website of the Progressive Alliance, the NDC is a member of the Progressive Alliance, and one of its um, aspirations, goals, is about promoting gender and LGBTQI um, rights. So I would urge that the party look at its own associations so that you have a social democratic party that is now promoting this hateful legislation. So does the NDC have one face at home and another face abroad? All right. Uh, thank you. For, thank you for that. And also uh, uh, for accurately bringing my mind, our mind to the submissions to the Constitution Review Commission, uh, Constitution Review Commission in respect of the, the, this subject matter. It's not to be taken as 80-something uh, submissions. That's, that is correct. Now, uh, Roxon. Yes. Uh... Um, to... to to, and I've seen you have started annotating <laughs> the, <laughs> the memorandum that the yeah. group brought. When you get to the portion where they speak about the inequity, inequity or inequal you know, situation, where something of, if you like, closer nature of, of close proximity. Yes, it's, it's prescribed as misdemeanor. Yes. And then in this bill, you say second degree felony. I'll deal with that. Okay, you say second degree felony. And you are not even tolerant of ideas to seek to improve the bill. Okay. First of all, Samson, it's incorrect for Prof and her team to suggest that we are intolerant to other views on this matter. I mean, why are we asking for memos if we are intolerant of other views? It does seem... Hold on. You have asked no, for no, memos. No, no, no. You have asked Sam, for memos. Sam, can but I... Can you I, you, are, you no. are asked for memos, no. but you are livid and no. use language... No. And Sam, use language that Sam, many people... Have you heard of equal to, for Sam, example? Sam. He says, you guys should tone down. Samson. Make your make your point Samson. without insulting Samson. the others. Samson. Have you heard uh, prof, prof and her team, Samson. have you heard some of your people insult them outright? Samson, mm. so can I make my point? Yes, but I'm and only deal, asking And deal with the issues they have raised. They've right. raised plethora of issues. A lot of them. I want to deal with them one after the other. Mm. It is incorrect for Prof and her team to suggest that we are, in, we, are, we are not tolerant of other views on the matter. Otherwise, in consonance with parliamentary procedure, we will not be inviting memos so to take views of other things that people are saying in respect of the bill and to perhaps incorporate them where we see fit. So to that extent, that is a fallacy. It's, it's a fallacious statement. It, 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 the, evidence, the evidence available defeats that point really yes i disagree with you on no? that yes you may disagree because but i'm saying because i have i no, can show something. you i can show you today. something you don't want to something. hear me no something there are <laughs> there are wayside people are people are all over the place say all manner of things no, no wayside let me tell you yes if you listen to sam george yes what did sam george say when he he reacts to akoto ampao yes okay yes many have criticized i have also that reaction to I could trump out. I'm Sam, not talking about Sam, yours. Sam, when he reacts to could trump out, a lawyer Sam, of such pedigree. Sam, can I just ask Sam, a question? Sam, no. You, you asked you, me for you, a you, point, you, and I'm no, just you, making you a point to you. Ask a question. But I'm you're I'm asking just, me to no, ask I'm you, saying, and I'm asking you, you don't I'm want to hear. I'm saying the evidence <laughs> available uh, does not lend credence to that fact. So that's the point. Two, Prof says what? Mm. That in Article 33.5, right. the, the anticipated rights of these people are captured in the constitution. She hasn't read the, con the constitutional provision in total, into detail, as a whole. And I'll refer to that. She read all of it. Please. If you have a contrary view, please state the yes. view rather yes. than say the way so, you have put it. So, okay. Mm. So 
in, in 33.5, it says the rights, duties, declarations, exactly. and guarantees exactly. relating to the fundamental human rights exactly. and freedom specifically mentioned in this chapter yes. shall not be regarded as excluding others. Yes. That's other rights. Yes. Not specifically mentioned, yes. which are considered to be inherent in a democracy. Yes. Number one, that's yes. a qualifi yes. qualification. Yes. And intended to secure the, the freedom, freedom and, and dignity, dignity of, of man. man. Not indignity of man. You say something Hold is on. indignity. The person tells you that you are insulting me something, by saying what is what I find to something. be to be okay with me. Some, you say something. it's an indignity. You are heckling me. I'm not. You are heckling me. I am saying the constitutional provision lays emphasis on dignity of man. And the dignity of man component or qualification is determined by the people who are practicing the, the democracy in the country. My dignity is determined by your view. Is no, that what you are saying? No. By the majority of people. And the majority of people are saying that this does not go to the dignity of man. That is the purposive interpretation to this provision. Two, she, she said that our, our, culture, our, our, our constitution is supreme to our cultural practices. She's forgotten that in the same constitution, in Article 11, our customary practices are inherently part of the constitution. You cannot detract that from the provisions in the constitution and, and, and argue as if the constitution is detached from the cultural practices and values of the people in this republic. That's a different interpretation. No, it is not. Which, it, in the hierarchy, in the hierarchy of laws, yes. Article 11, really. Yes. In the hierarchy of laws, yes. where is your cultural practices? Where, that, where does it stay? I'll, I'll show you. Your constitution overrides oh, it. No. That, you see, that is the mistake that we make. It's not a we, mistake. No. We, we, we think that... Read it. Well, Article 11, hold on, read it. Hold on. At, Article 11 is here, something. Yes, yeah, so read me, it. Let me make this point. Okay. I am saying that the constitution is a document. It's a wholesome document. Right. You cannot say that the provision in Article 11 can be deducted or can be minus from the, the, the interment of the entire constitutional provision. Mm. So the constitution incorporated in the constitution are customary practices and values. Mm. And, and if you go to Article 11, 2 and 3, 11, 2 says the common law of Ghana shall comprise the rules of law, generally known as the common law, the rules generally known as the doctrine of equity, and the rules of customary law, including those determined by the superior court of judicature. So our courts have a role in this. Mm. Then three, for the purposes of this article, customary law means the rules of law, which by custom are applicable to particular communities in Ghana. Mm. Now let us go back to Article 11.1. What does it say? The laws of Ghana shall comprise this constitution. Now where do you find Article 11 in the constitution? Is it not inherent in the constitution that has been listed as the supremest law in this country? So nobody can argue. It's as if you want to say that the human hand is not part of the human body. You can't do that. So the, there are the, components. The, 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 the provision you read, yes. which says that yes. the common law of Ghana yes. is where you put your customary law. Yes, that but, but, that's, but that's where it is. Yes, so common law. As yes. a lawyer, wait, yes. just yes. simple. Yes. As a lawyer, yes. what is the place of common law with legislation or constitutional provisions? Yes, I am saying uh -uh. that the constitutional provisions supersede those of the common law and practices. So you have said what I said. No, but I'm saying that the argument should be that the common law is not detractable from the constitutional provisions. Or the, the that's not the point she the, made. The internment that's, of the That's not the point they are no, making. No, she made the point. No, that's not the no, point. No, she made, made the point. You, no, I, that's the way I understood on. it. No, you can ask her. She says that the provisions in the or the effect of the constitution is supreme to our customary practices. And I'm saying that our customary But you have just practices. said that. I you have just it. said that your customary laws are part of I your common saying, law. You, I and where, that, where there is that legislation, is, yes. it overrides your common law. Yes, but you are saying that where a legislation is in conflict mm. of a customary practice, 
then those of the constitutional provision will supersede. All right. But they've not been able to establish that any part of the constitution is in conflict. Now, they make reference to Article 26. Is that it? Mm. The rights. Okay, I can refer to it in their memo. Right. Now, in their memo, they had this to say. If you go to uh, page 9, you have been able to page the document. Mm. Or paragraph 34. It says Article 18.1b says as follows: All persons shall have the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and belief, which shall include academic freedom. Now, this constitutional provision is speaking to the freedom to engage in things that are legitimate. So it does not give you the freedom to engage in criminal thought. That is why we have, we have provisions right. on conspiracy. That's right. Now, it does not give you the freedom to engage in, 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 in criminal conscientization of people. It, the law will catch up with you. This, this provision does not give you the right to, to, to manifest criminal beliefs. In the same way, when we talk of freedom of association, implied in that provision is the fact that you have the right to associate yourself with lawful groups, not, not to associate with unlawful groups or associations. Lawful groups doing lawful things. Exactly. So, so the provisions they've, they've captured, as it were, to anchor their argument is also gone. Mm. Now, they went back to Egyptology mm. and karmatology. So, so what you're saying here is that they shouldn't be saying it is unconstitutional and it's against the fundamental human rights of uh, peop the LGBT people to criminalize their speech, uh, their association, and things like that. You are saying exactly. Okay. And 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 again, to uncle uncle their their argument, they go far back into Egyptology and quoted some work done in 930 BC by an author. And reference a line from that document said that somebody said she did not have sex with a female in the in the palace. In the, in the palace, no, it's not in the palace. In the it's something like that. Yes, you're right. Um, let me let me quickly. No, I think you can go ahead and make the point. Yes, uh. and and because of that, it appears to be the first recorded semblance of homosexuality and gayism in recorded history. You're right. Which is referable to a 2300 and something BC Egypt, Egyptian practices. Mm. And yet, they refer to our, our Act 39, our Act 29, which is the Criminal Code or Criminal and Other Offenses Act, as a draconian colonial legislation. A 1960. Yeah, this is it's, it's, uh, what you are referring to. I never had sex with a woman in the temple. In the temple. Right. Exactly. Mm. Recorded in 930 BC, referable to paintings found in a tomb in about 2380 BC. Senior Kotuan et al. were comfortable to refer to that to anchor their, their argument. And, and ipso facto asked Parliament in a very condescending manner to reject the bill. They are not saying that portions of the bill should be amended. Their conclusion is that the bill should be rejected totally. That's the conclusion. That's the conclusion. Yes, but they have spoken about portions where Which you, portions? you can do uh, things you, without no, no, a bill. You, no, you send a memo. And, right. and I'll tackle all that. Mm. You send a memo. This is the conclusion. The last paragraph says, it's all that the bill ought with respect to be firmly rejected by the Parliamentary Select Committee on Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs and by Parliament as a whole. So they should be saying they should stop saying other things that they are now saying. No, the memo, in, hold on. In, in their memo, in their memo. Sam, no, wait, wait. Sam, that in is their the memo, conclusion. In their me that's the conclusion. That's yes. fair. Yes. But in their memo, yes. they refer you to other things that are taken care of will, by your criminal offences. I will, I will tackle those. I will, I'm taking them methodically. Mm. I'll come to even the unconstitutionality issues they are raising. Now they say that if you go to the the provisions in a in a criminal code, mm. the, there's a distinction that 
where you engage in sodomy, when you sodomize somebody. And I want to even make this point before I go there. Again, he refers to our conduct as parliamentarians sponsoring this bill as akin to medieval Europeans who were going around witch hunting witches. And that's how come the expression witch hunting found its way into the English language, isn't it? Is he also aware that the word sodomy, which is part of our criminal provisions, in fact, which is a, which is a provision in our criminal law, also derives its origin from the city of Sodom, in according to the biblical account in Genesis. Sodom and Gomorrah. No, I will not even add Gomorrah. That God, it's God himself, destroyed the people of Sodom because they were engaged in sodomy. And so Europeans, in crafting their statues and found men to be engaged in this, they went back to that biblical account and, 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 and referenced the activity to the city of Sodom and made it an offense in criminal law. Is Sinakutu Ampawe. Okay. So, so that so, is something so about that. Go, going so, forward. Yes, going yeah, forward. No, I'm, I'm being Sam, told that we have done a Sam, lot of time. Let, the, wait, wait, Sam, wait. Don't be in a hurry at all. I should be in a um, hurry because in, the issues in, they have raised. Wait, wait. In, in Chair Manson's presentation, yes. he speaks to this bill will impose you know, a cost on the exchequer. Therefore, it should be surrendered to the Attorney General. Uh, for purposes of the president presenting it in respect of that's what I want to tackle 108 that's what I want to tackle so it looks like you may not be able to go forward from here no you know it's that position too is not correct okay and the the, the incorrectness of that submission is anchored firmly in that provision itself mm. sometimes the constitutional provisions there's a way of reading them to, to bring clarity to it. And this is the way you, you do it. Article 108 says, Parliament shall not. So, you know, techniques and interpretation, you leave all the, the other modifications and adjective clause. So it says, Parliament shall not, A, proceed upon a bill, including an amendment to a bill, that in the opinion of the person presiding, makes provision for any of the following. A, the imposition of taxation or the alteration of taxation otherwise than by a reduction. Or two, the imposition of a charge on the consolidated fund or other public funds of Ghana or the alteration of any such charge otherwise than by a reduction. This is what Che is referring to. And my position is that at the time that you, you attack the bill on these grounds, it's at the time that the bill had been submitted. Okay. All right. So it's late and in the it's day. It's late. It's completely late. At all. Are you working with the majority leadership? Yes, we are. They they held a press conference three or four days ago, saying that they are in, they are in full support of the bill. Mm -hmm. So, for you to say that uh, the justice emanates from the people, and 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 on that basis, you are in full support of the bill. And then when you leave the press conference, you come and say things like this. You are blowing hot and cold. But I'm saying you, that. Have you heard? Hold on. Is it, is hold it on. Uh, so for, let's, or, no, let's deal is with it. For who, or who, for money or somebody yes. who says that the church is ready to pay for the cost that, uh, I, I am tackling, that I'm, I'm tackling the matter. That Chairman is concerned about. I'm in motion. I'm tackling the matter. So I'm saying at the, at the time that you have to raise the Article 108 matter, it's long gone. The bill has been laid, read for the first time. Irreversible. And referred, and it's gone. So you can't now be saying that you want to raise the matter. But do you agree that it's I, do, I don't agree. That is the second leg, that's the second leg of my 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 submission. First of all, this is this is the legislation that is to proscribe a future offensive conduct a future offensive conduct. It is not to prescribe conduct that has happened in the past. Mm. Because our, our jurisprudence doesn't permit that. Retroactive legislation. Yes. And then somebody says that, no, in the implementation of the law in the future, it will occasion a charge on the consolidated fund. Right. How is that? Now, when somebody commits an offense, it is the duty of the republic Otherwise, then there is no way 
Because you see, the road traffic, the road traffic law has just been amended by some private members. Saying that because he tattooed, that wasn't an offense. Saying that where a marauding driver knocks or where a marauding driver is, is involved in an accident and the accident and is liable for the accident and leads to the death of a fetus, he commits a crime. Mm -hmm. It used not to be so. Now, how does the implementation of this law occasion a charge on the consolidated fund? And that is my argument to them. Because a similar provision, mm. a, a law has been passed that makes a certain conduct offensive. There's a rule assigned to the minister, the religious uh, minister exactly. for religion. Exactly. There's a rule assigned to the gender and children's protections ministry yes. uh, for various purposes. Yes. And then there'll be prosecutions. Yes. Yes. So, so I am saying, if you read, for instance, clause 22 of the bill, we are, we are actually making it a crime for anybody to attack, as it were, any known gay, any known person who may, be, who may have been discovered to engage in this. But all the other an an the antagonists of the bill's antagonists have refused to pay attention to that provision. They, they pay attention to it in their memorandum. They say, I, they yes. say that um, that's an insincere thing you have done. In how, how is that an insincere thing? In any thing? case, if they, anybody... They, they have glossed over if, if anybody, to say that the bill is a hate bill. It's yeah. a homophobic bill. Yeah, so here's and the I'm, point. Yes. If anybody assaults anybody, what you're talking about is assault. If anybody assaults anybody, yes. it's already a crime. Yes, I agree. But this one, this is a specific provision. But, but you, see, you don't need it. No, it because is, if you no, assault me, you, you do, have assaulted you do. me. It is in direct response to the argument that the bill, in its totality, is a homophobic bill. It's a hate bill against homosexuals. And we ask, the bill is saying, in reading the bill in, to, in totality, mm. the bill says that where a person is identified to be a lesbian, gay, all that, and I'll come to you to your point. There's speciality. No, right? I'm moving on. Okay. I'm moving on. Now, it's discovered to have engaged in this, and he's attacked. Mm. The person commits a crime. And yet, they say that the bill that is saying that if somebody does that, commits a crime, is rather, is rather promoting hate. How, how is that? How is that? Their, how, point how is you, that their point to you is that that is assault, already provided for by our law. So you don't know. That, that is not for common it. assault. That is not common assault. Okay. That is a targeted assault. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so let me go around quickly so that we, 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 uh, we take a break on this. Let me quickly, quickly, just uh, some, you some raise few... Some no, sorry, we can't finish No, everything. you raise some matter. We can't finish. We can't finish. We can't finish. Hold on, hold on, we can't review. finish. Um, and and, and starting with you, sorry, starting with you, uh, <laughs> Dr. Duse, where, where he has come to on the charge on the consolidated fund, and the sort of unnecessary tokenism, as they say, uh, about attacking somebody. What do you say about that? I think uh, almost every law that's passed, there could be some uh, financial consequences to the state. Um, but at the point of deciding whether to prosecute or not to prosecute, uh, that is where the, the cost element will come in. So I think that should not be a disincentive to, to actually uh, protect the public interest. Okay. But after listening to the discussion thus far, I am fortified in my position that we have a situation of what I call a shield and a sword situation. You know what the shield does? The traditional laws have mainly been employed as a shield to shield the public against certain practices that are not in our interest. That's why we had them in, in Act 29 and all the other laws. But in this case, the proper, the proper sexuality whatever law uh, bill, which they are now uh, pushing to pass, is actually being used as a saw in the sense that it's now injecting certain morals into um, our public um, fiber, which is not permitted to be done as they are seeking to do. That's why they are using adjectives to classify this uh, as such. And uh, the harshness of the rhetoric um, is also confirming the position that these people think that there are certain um, idiosyncrasies, uh, religious uh, orientations that you should all subscribe to. 
And that is way out of order. And I believe that if the event, in the unlikely event that the law is passed, it won't stand the test of constitutionality. Mm. Uh, do, do you take the view that it's unfair that uh, those who may be found to commit what is being prescribed will suffer, are liable to suffer lesser sanctions that, than those who may promote it? Uh, you know, who may form, organize, register, promote, uh, 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 among other things. They are liable to six years, uh, not less than six years, and not more than 10 years imprisonment. Whilst those caught in the conduct, that is if it is passed, in this form, uh, are liable to, is it three to five years, rather? You know something? Uh, that's one aspect which is actually strange with the, the bill. You know, if you look at the right to free expression and the right to actually exercise your mind and, and think and advocate about things, um, that is what the Constitution guarantees. The fact that you are writing copiously uh, about gayism and the rest at the universities will not make you an advocate or someone who should be deemed to be committing a crime. And in that way, the current bill is seeking to actually outlaw that. That is clearly a violation of the Constitution. It means that you can't actually have a fertile mind to think about things that we think Ghanaians should not is themselves practice. And for the academy, that is not what it's mm. supposed to be. Okay. You are allowed to think out and write about so many things, in fact, and speak gibberish, All right. if you want to call it that way, mm. and not be deemed to have committed an offense. That is the essence of free expression and, and free exercise of thought in, in the academia. In some 20 seconds, what will you say about the what we are told, that the church is ready to foot the bill, as in the financial burden aspect of the bill? Yeah, well, that's in a sense saying that they are converting all of us into uh, church goers. Uh, and, and therefore, any time the church decides to sponsor it, then we should all accept whatever values and norms they want to inject into our society. Ghana is a secular state. And the things that do not come into the public sphere should not be um, injected into us as a sword, mm. but rather the society or the, uh, the state should shield us from, from that. That all is right. all that the state is supposed to do, mm. other than injecting morals and, and values into us that way. Mm. I, I almost forgot this. All of you would, uh, who are speaking should say something about it. The embassies and their conduct um, I can't imagine that an embassy would tell Suhini, a member of parliament, who has taken a letter from parliament asking for a visa, that he's not showing sufficient social ties and doesn't show sufficient uh, uh, income for which, when he travels, he will come back. That sounds like an insult. What, what should happen well, to that? I, I don't know the, the other motivations that went into uh, their decision-making processes. But you know that there's a lot of subjectivity in, in how they couch these uh, refusals. But it tells you that you should also think about working in such a way that you develop your state and stay in your country. Thank you. Um, now to uh, Professor Aka, Gottfried, let's, let's hear from you on what you, what you have to say about these attacks uh, that are coming, that are associated with people who are sponsoring the bill or who are for the bill. And also, what do you say about those who say the threats uh, about political, you know, consequences for people who may show a different view to the bill? What do you say about that? Thank you very much, uh, Samson. The, the attacks are um, totally unnecessary. And... Uh, I don't think anybody should suggest that it's because of the bill. I mean, we have had these things as taboos. I mean, if you read, uh, if you have read uh, Professor Kwame Jechi, Kwame Jechi is one of the Professor Jechi, uh, philosophers. Uh, yeah, philosophers. I have his book called The African Cultural Values, an introduction. On page 78, it says that most Africans would want to deny the existence of homosexual practice in traditional African societies. Homosexuality is considered taboo and would be outlawed on moral as well as social grounds because the continuity of the family and indeed of the human species will be most seriously affected if homosexuality were practiced. The concept of artificial insemination 
which could be used to bring children into a family composed of homosexual couple is far removed from the ideas and practices of childbirth in the African society. That's Professor Kwame So, the, you know, let nobody suggest that we are, we are stupid. Okay, so uh, we, we Africans or Ghanaians, we are not stupid. Uh, and I take exception to anybody to try to think that we don't know what we are talking about. So what, and, should, and, the, what should the uh, state be doing where it's becoming so, clear that these embassies are using visas as a weapon, travel as a weapon? Well, it's unfortunate. But that's, again, that's another angle of this movement, this uh, LGBTQ movement. It's become a movement and a religion. It's cultural imperialism. Some societies, Western civilizations, want to now impose that as a culture on the whole world. And I think I'm surprised that Ghanaians will be supporting that kind of imperialism. After being a sovereign nation, having independence, we cannot from Ghana here go to the UK and ask them to legalize polygamy. Why would somebody want to use all tactics to force it upon us? We are a sovereign nation. Yeah. And I've argued in my memorandum, and I think I take exception to Professor the Chairman's suggestion that my economic arguments were spurious. Uh, she's an anthropologist, and I respect I'm her. My lawyer also. And a lawyer also. So I respect And I you. understand economics, please. Yes, okay. but then if you understand economics, yes, will please. you tell me one of these Western countries that legalized homosexuality when they were developing country? Not a single <laughs> one. Not a single one. And I'm making the argument because it has socioeconomic implications. And if any country did that, it's going to have a negative consequence. It's not that they have just become wise. Mm. They have been fighting this by their laws all these years when they were a developing country. And I can show you, see, if you now look at the HIV AIDS, for example, in 2020, we budgeted 100 million US dollars to fight HIV AIDS. And Most if it is well known- money came from somewhere else. No, no problem. And that money is coming from somewhere, which then means that we as a poor country don't even have the resources to fight HIV AIDS. So we need somebody to be donating money. With COVID, we need people to be donating vaccines. So as a country like that, if you need, supposing this country stop giving us 100 million to fight HIV AIDS, and it is well researched, well known from the UNAIDS themselves that homosexual practice is the greatest transmission mechanism for HIV. That is not disputable, even from the United Nations. And if this is one of the areas where HIV AIDS is more prominent and is going to increase, to the extent that in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Amer Latin America, you know, the rate is as much as 70% HIV is among the homosexual community. Okay. And if we now say that we should legalize it, I'm saying it has economic implications. Yeah. HIV is as dismissed uh, many uh, prof, of the human capital prof, prof, in prof, Africa. Prof, prof just, just a perspective. I'm not sure there's been a discussion about legalization. I think that the, the discussion is about the criminal pro, proscription. Uh, the other continue. side, yeah, the other side of my question was, should the the religious groups and others be saying that be threatening the threatening the politicians with votes over this well, i think that's also unfair but again you should know that the the members of parliament even the president they are there on behalf of the people and this government for the people that's and right. therefore the aspirations of the people must be seen to be reflected look that's look Recently, I lived in the UK. Recently, there began to be a discussion in the UK that they did not like to be part of the European Union. Mm. And the, the, the population began to agitate because they saw the European, mm. uh, you know, the immigrants from Eastern Europe mm. coming to take their job here and there. And any responsible government needed to reflect rules and regulations that reflect the aspirations and the agitations on the ground. That's what sent them to referendum so that they can allow the people to have a say mm. whether they want to have Brexit or not. All right. And in that referendum, it was only 52% of the, the UK people that voted to come out, and the That's government right. respected that, and they're out. Thank so you. now, when you have a country where 93% of the people who voted you into power, your constituents, are saying that we don't like such a thing, and you insist on making sure that it's going to be there, whether they threaten or they don't threaten, it would definitely reflect right. in the elections. Thank you. So uh, uh, them, yeah, thank you. In thank you. And, 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 and Prof, the other aspects, we, there are other countries that are going the way that 
you know, these sponsors are doing currently in our parliament. In Nigeria, in, in, Nigeria in 20, uh, uh, 2013, what they, the bill that they submitted, which I understand was, uh, was uh, carried, carries the same sort of punishment for those who uh, associate with clubs or societies or organizations um, and so forth. Except that I don't see there about, you know, speech being criminalized. That, 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 there too, the sentence is 10 years. And if you got into a marriage, same-sex marriage, you were liable to a term of 14 years imprisonment. So it does appear that within even some parts of Africa, this is the move. Are you talking to me? Yes, please. Thank you very much, Samson. So I want to associate myself with many of the points that Dr. Okokwebu say made and to respond to a couple of points. Last week, Honorable Sam George was purporting to tell us what we could teach as intellectuals in our classrooms. I think on this same program, this is a huge infringement of academic freedom and really a restriction on critical thought, which is the hallmark of an academic. An academic is not just somebody who teaches in a university. It's somebody who espouses critical thought and engages on the issues. In our memo, we did not make any demands. We were responding to the bill that has been put before us. Uh, Honorable Dafia Mepo, who is, I'm your senior by many years. I just want to remind you, okay? I was called to the bar in 1977. So when you call senior, I'll call senior men But in any case, I've heard you telling me what I should do with my children, which is really, really for an, a member of parliament faced with the bill. I was so disappointed. But the reason why you say we use language, when you use language like recant in a, in a bill before parliament, what is it reminiscent of? That is why we were referring to the Middle Ages. Okay, so you're close 22. If the person will recant and accept treatment, then they don't go to prison. I mean, what kind of state do you live in? Is this, are you, is, are you the Taliban? Huh? Now you mentioned the Road Traffic Amendment Act. And here again, we smell, we see the hand of the World Congress of Families. We are talking about the right of unborn, unborn fetuses. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible that of all the rights to be protected, it is that of unborn fetuses? Your Article 108 submission, the opinion of the person presiding. The person is a referee. This is the same person who has promised, even before the memos are considered, that the bill will be passed by the end of the year. The, the procedural ground can be raised at any time, even after the bill is passed. So because you are saying that it is a future. So if you don't raise it, and then it imposes all these charges because you do, do not raise it, it becomes constitutional. No. All right. Um, the issue, the, sorry, Samson, the issue about artificial insemination and Professor Jechi's views. I would advise Professor Aka to go around the fertility clinics in, in Ghana, where a lot of in artificial insemination is taking place. So this view that you know, you can only do certain things a certain way. It's old-fashioned. It does not accord with people's wishes. Not everybody wants to have children. Not everybody can have children. So what are you going to do now with women who cannot have children, men who are impotent? How do they threaten the sanctity of the, of the family? Okay. We're not talking about legalization. We're talking about your criminalization. All right. And I, mm. I hope you paid attention to the distinctions I made between sex and marriage. Thank and you. What the state Thank you. Thank you so very much. Uh, of course, this subject oh, is Madam such Sikos. that it, you know. No, no. give them second no, chance. No, no, you, they do second. You have done second. No, I haven't. Okay, quickly. One. Yes. In fact, some say drug use, illicit drug use among lesbians, gay, among that group. In UK, it is 70% according to the study. In Netherlands, it is 80%. Illicit use of drugs among gays. Now, Prof says that we should, she's, she's made a distinction between um, marriage and what? The issue they raised in their memo, of all the arguments, the end product was that the bill should be rejected. They are not making any proposal to say, 
they, we, should, we should amend, for instance, the title. That's not the kind of thing they are saying. No, they have said so. No. Please, please. Ah, something. Please. Let's be what? factual about it. Ah, this they, is no, 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 no. Something. Let's be factual something. about it. Um, I am, you see, you are heckling me. You are giving me one minute. And you are heckling me. There's, no, there's no heckling about it. You are heckling. If you are not accurate, I am, if you I are am not accurate, accurate, I'll state it. This is the memo. You submit the memo. When you write a paper and you draw a certain conclusion, it is based on the arguments you made. I agree to so the fact I am that the that conclusion say, says that reject the bill. So, so, no, no, so no, what no, I hold on, hold on, hold on. I am busy. Before you get I'm to the conclusion, Roxin, uh, 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 Roxin, what you are they doing, what you are doing is most unfair. No, that's a 28-page no, document. Guys, 49 paragraphs. And you take one paragraph no, and say that's no, all there is no, to it. That is the that's what we call it, conclusion. But I had pointed out to you, they are no, stating no, clearly that certain provisions that is, which already exist in the criminal no, that is an academic exercise they argue for and against within the memo then then they concluded they said we urge the parliamentary select committee on constitutional legal and parliamentary affairs to hear this patient and liberating west of amas gsa from the past in order not to create a society where the state through legislation imposes one view of proper human sexual rights as the only acceptable one in our free republic and where dissenting views and expressions are criminalized and expressed. What the bill envisages is the very opposite of the West freedom and justice mm. that emblazes our coat of arms. The bill ought, comma, with respect, comma, to be firmly rejected by the Parliamentary Select Committee on Constitutional, Legal, and Parliamentary that Affairs. That is not in doubt. But you but, are inaccurate but, but, no. if you say they don't make suggestions as to specific points. But I'm saying and if what you're asking done something about to it. be rejected, Thank have you, you made suggestions? We'll take a break here. We'll be right back. If you reject something. You're welcome back. This is Newsfile. It's still most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on Newsfile, we put Ghana first. As you know, this subject's very emotive. <clears throat> Even where you can look at the clear, you know, uh, things on the paper, it will still most likely degenerate into uh, an emotive debate. Um, I'll share with you some of your views. Uh, and then we'll move on to the fuel uh, discussion. I need to announce right away that the discussion on the 133 radio stations, we will take that next week. We will suspend that and take it next week and rather look at how much further our Kenke will shrink uh, with this uh, fuel price hikes. So uh, some messages are coming through that I'm going to share with you. Let me start with... Uh, some of them here. This one says, uh, it is interesting that the majority leader is advocating the LGBTQ uh, bill be surrendered to the Attorney General because it imposes cost on the government purse. Well, that's a nice way to kill the bill then. What happened to the spousal property rights bill? That bill has been sitting with these guys for a long time. They are not paying attention. You people, what's wrong? Spousal property bill. Um, over 35 years, we have not passed it. Of course, you know the Right to Information Act, how long it took. The sponsor should consider raising funds from the churches, mosque, and the people of Ghana. I am sure people will be willing to contribute to fund the bill. The bill may have certain challenges, but these can be addressed and, uh, and the bill passed in accordance with law. I am against LGBTQI plus and Ghanaians don't want it. It's simple. This is coming from Frederick and Frederick is a lawyer. Um, okay, so a couple of you. Okay, so you're not allowing the MP to talk. <laughs> you don't know this work, how it goes. All right, thanks. Let me take a fuller uh, submission of some of the questions. Okay, here, uh, Jama Woyale says that those in leadership who are quiet over this debate and have assumed a neutral position on this LGBTQ issues are the most dangerous of all. Uh, Afuk says if they deny you visas, retaliate by denying them too and stop complaining. Sure. Uh, Nyavo John 
says everywhere in the world laws are passed and enforced for the greater good of the public and not to satisfy the whims and caprices of a few minority majority of Ghanaians abhor the practices of these people uh, this thing hence the bill must be passed uh, citizen Yao says if the church says they are ready to bear the cost then the bill should be amended by saying the church specific names the that pledge uh, name that pledge <laughs> shall be shall, shall build prisons for the government to jail all those who breach the act and shall bear all cost that comes with it till eternity yes the church is already building prisons this is the Pentecost church yes. that has built one already somewhere okay I do I do David I do Jenfi David says the straw man argument the straw man argument that keeps coming up in the debate on this obnoxious anti LGBTQ bill is troubling I can see I can't see anyone arguing against this bill saying LGBTQ rights must be legalized in Ghana. They are saying this hateful and ill thought through bill must not be passed. Proverbial, proverbial Twitter, that's Kofi Amwa, says the LGBTQ advocates say who is being hateful. When laws were being passed to stop corruption, were they lovely? These two are cankers and shouldn't be tolerated. Anyone who hates uh, it is the one who isn't objective. Right. Thank you very much for your messages. Okay.